Hello there. So uh, I've got to give some caveats first. One is, uh, whilst I've been in publishing for quite a while, this, all the context for this is around uh, my role at Emerald, which is a, a publisher based around the business uh, research sector. So that is a, the reason I make that caveat is because when you're talking chemistry or physics or other you know, med med medical sciences, it's, it's a vastly different beast. And, this, and what I'm getting at is that the, the, uh, the focus for us in that market is around the employee and the student as much as the faculty in the business school's interest in reaching out to the corporate space. So it is by its very nature one that weaves together both research and out outcome, um, uh, is, it, which is more, more problematic with articles. So um, uh, what I'll cover here today is um, with that basis is that I, I'm not trying to throw out any great, uh, you know, and, and not, I'm not anti-journals or anti-articles, I'm anti the, uh, the inability to, for a, 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 the wider populace to interact with the findings therein. And what we're finding with business schools, because they have to interrelate that and, and the closeness of teaching, there may well be some, some, some discovery aspects that could be taken to other fields. So, um, this is an old, uh, well-known slide, really. It's, um, what I want to focus on is, you know, this, I'm trying to make the connection here between um, what we've discussed at length today, this, uh, some, some of these, these classical arguments of, uh, you know, we don't need journals anymore, through to how do we make journals more, more, more discoverable, the content, the digital science, the fantastic stuff that some of those businesses are doing. All of those are all part and parcel of, of ensuring that uh, researchers from funding to ideation are, 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 find, are getting involved in research right the way through to research and publishing. I'm not going to cover that ground. You know it very well, I'm sure. What I do want to focus in on is this knowledge creation and whether any of that, the availability of articles actually generates uh, knowledge uh, outside certainly of the research, if you like, a, a bubble. It's a massive bubble, but it is a bubble in term, term, terms of impact. What we find with business schools, if you take any straw poll of a business school, the word impact comes up all the time because, of course, their funding is very, very different compared to the larger institutional space. Um, one of the uh, most, most respected gurus out there, if you like, there's lots of gurus in management. Um, if we're going to significantly alter our business space, it's not just a turnaround because a turnaround is, is a transformation that's tragically delayed. It's something, an expensive substitute for well-timed adaptation. So it, this, this presence that we have to adapt and feel our way, um, there's lots of unknowns, no one has the answers, but certainly leaving it too late is going to be a challenge for all of us. Um, that's been said before, but so what, we're, what I'm outlining here is how we can embed change within the organisation to respond to what has been for us, we're a classical publisher, responding to that business school market differently. Um, I will make a comment at this point um, before we get in transition of change, is that um, there's been a number of uh, interesting articles written around um, courses and the role of librarians. So it's not just the business schools. We sell, obviously, into the institutions, the standard content and, and other services. Um, but the course content is now becoming increasingly part of, uh, because of, of its complexity, learning. Um, for me is as much about research and research articles deliver learning as much as it is about actual learning content that you might do to learn a photography course. All of that is for me is learning and once behaviourally I've made the leap that research publishing is learning as much as any other. Psychologically I've certainly challenged myself in, diff in different ways. Um, the fact that learning is now much more IT based and the funding required to um, and the amount of people participating in learning, it's students and faculty, whether they're reluctant lecturers or not and they want to be doing research or they're actual lecturers, teaching is fundamental. The cost of doing that and, and the digitization of learning within the institution is something that business schools are adapting to but the wider institutions are and the libraries are, are beginning to be the center of that. So there's strong arguments that digital learning environments are producing also a lot of data that, is, that librarians love. So this, this idea that um, this transformation that we can make both from the connection from research into learning I, I think is very real. This slide simply talks to a number of the businesses, which um, is fairly, fairly self-explanatory, really, around some of the industry types that they're in. This came, came from a, a co copy from Roland Berger, a consultancy in Europe. They um, looked at a number of businesses. I mean, we look at Netflix, for example. We're beginning to look at some models where we can actually have an all-you-can-eat model that provides um, for a fee a number of things we might roll out during a given year that the, the customer would benefit from that rather than the piecemeal license approach. 
Um, you can see also, of course, the classic New York, New York Times, whether that's going to save newspapers, given the news of, it, of the Independent and whatnot in the UK, who knows. But New York Times certainly have, have tried to uh, adjust their business model, and you'll notice some, some other examples there, which I think are indicative of the challenges that we face. I've been to, uh, like many of you, a number of these events. This is obviously very different because it's, it's a brand new event from Mark, but um, some of the, I, I, I truly think that some of the debates here are, are, are changing, but fundamentally, can we change that? core business in order to address some of these needs. This slide is the slide I did, and this is always dangerous, because I'm not sure how, on these PowerPoints how, how you use circles over circles. I'm sure everybody has challenges. Whether this is appropriate mathematical use of circles, I've no idea. But what I'm trying to demonstrate here is if you take data as the very outcome, so libraries, as I mentioned, are, are, are stuck, you know, they, they, they are wedded, and quite rightly so. If you don't generate data, print, you can't generate any understanding of the market. So both the research, the more classical market in orange, looks at data which fuels research, which fuels publication, and there, of course, is that classic dissemination piece which we all make um, good uh, revenues from, and also the challenges of OA, but dissemination is still underpins that. So if you take a, um, the other approach around learning is that learning is still steeped in data. Data absolutely fuels everything that's online. If we're not generating data, we are literally blind in the market. Um, and that will generate knowledge. And that transfer of knowledge, is, for me, is where if, you, if we're truly to address the challenge of, of getting research used, not just, I mean, downloads at libraries don't tell us an awful lot about a unit of information as an article that isn't actually built or designed for learning. It's designed by academics, and it hasn't changed. And we know that. And where we've tried to do it, it's been very expensive. So that behavior around the PDF is something that has to be transformatively different in the unit of, of, uh, of, of information that those individuals can utilize and learning tools and widgets and gadgets that are available to, to, to create new content can be expensive, but experimentally we found that we, can, we have a tolerance for um, giving these um, tests and pilots into libraries and into institutions and they're well received. So it's the transfer of information from research into learning which can generate a, a direct return in knowledge. And as I said, from the business school perspective, they are fundamentally equipping people with tools and knowledge and skills. And that's quite a different beast than just sort of undergraduate students per se, just as an example. So the vision versus basics. We've tried to adapt or tried to, uh, our vision to accommodate that learning agenda, that including the higher ed route to market, if you will. The high, higher education is a complex institution, as has been said before in, in, at the conference. And the, the trigger will be incentives and how we create value for um, those individuals based on a vision that is all encompassing. It's not predetermined by what we do now. It's not predetermined by the journals or the books or those classical, however beautiful they can be, those aren't necessarily incentives for change. Um, experimentation, as I've mentioned, it's, it's impossible to land new things without experimentation. Um, and we have to grapple with those um, great sort of cash-rich parts of our business versus the, the ability to experiment in the market. And that truly is just transferring understanding that anybody out in the market, um, our scholarly business, um, can, can bring back into the organization and trigger um, uh, experimentation from that community interaction. So this world is full of sprouting seeds. I had a bit of fun on Google. Um, the internet then, these seedbeds, these seedbeds are new businesses. What challenges my head is this idea that we've got, we're, we're really, I think, competing, given this, a lot of data out there, a lot of demand for transformative change as individuals, a huge investment, both from a personal level, students know, are, are paying a lot for learning, whether it's you or a true student in the classical sense, they are um, being uh, met, the needs are being met by a lot of startups, including, not, not being a startup, the likes of Google, etc. So this classical change of who we compete against is quite a significant thing for me. And these sprouting seeds, both in, in terms of where the money is, the students in, in the business, um, in their own businesses, the businesses themselves, and students no longer can bear the burden of textbooks, the open textbook pieces there. So whether it's sprouting seeds from those students who are carrying a lot of demand, or whether it's those startups that are serving that demand, we're not necessarily part of that bigger higher education learning environment. Um, this aspiration of students, the, if you take, I mean, this, I'm, I don't come from Pearson, I've never worked for an educational publisher, I come from a research background. The, the idea that education, therefore, is what we should be also tackling, it's not just what they do or those other people do, I think is, is really the purpose of this talk from my end. So whether that comes across or not, I've said it now. Um, the, this, this graph here is, 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 
is outlining how the students not only are bringing more money into institutions, they have requirements that institutions are eager to meet, which changes the dynamics of how an institution has to serve, serve some of the key stakeholders. The public funding of education is changing. The ability to privately fund and, and for students to be equipped isn't going away. And there's a, a, a significant increase. You, you'll have seen these graphs with articles, the amount of articles being there. The same is happening in higher, higher education. So, just a few more slides now. I've, I've tried to give an idea of what, an, if we carry on like we are in terms of uh, research publishing, one version of 2016 may look like this, which is um, same dis uh, uh, dissemination discovery, the challenge of who owns IP, the, uh, um, the route to generating re research, the role of the faculty, the role of the institution. That's a well-trodden path, and it's one that we, we already tread and, and are heavily invested in. Now, that of course, re uh, results in various metrics being generated. There's the authors, the journals, the articles, very classical ring-fenced entities within our market, which, uh, which essentially explains our business. The, uh, the role of globalization, collaborative researchers, peer-to-peer, -peer, the community, there's some really rich, very, very online first elements to this business, but unfortunately we don't always design our business to meet that need. And that's why psychologically taking a shift that we're actually wanting to generate uh, uh, digital first tools that will translate what, uh, what's out there in research and giving people value in a learning sense is where I think researchers through to faculty, not only in, a, in, a, in, in class, can do so on, on constantly as w w with institutional backing. So this is, an, this is a, the final slide on this side. More units require more authors. There's more data generated, more publications. There's more startups. We're counting more things in articles. We're, we're still boxed in by the article or the book, or, and, and the libraries are still boxed in to buying great chunks of great content, but it doesn't necessarily transform or land anything new within the user base. So again, within business schools, the, we know that our research articles are read, but it's probably reluctantly so. I mean, I read articles when I was a student, and uh, they were just things you had to read rather than that, that you know, they, they were fleet of foot, real compelling learning pieces. Um, so more rocks and hard places. OA, I think, is a, is a fa fascinating area. It's a fantastic business model. But we can't keep changing business models on its head in order to demonstrate demonstrably different things within the market. So more dissemination, does, it require, do, does that result in more knowledge? Or, or is, and, and is there more value? It might be more value for us than the librarian, this classic debate between do we understand our users, is the librarian actually the only, uh, the only stakeholder we truly have a relationship with because of the transactional element? That is what we're trying to unpick. So another alternative for 2060, I mean, clearly this might take a lot longer. I'm just taking a, a, a year. Um, another version might be that we use partnerships, joint ventures, um, and think way outside of our industry. And this... These sessions, we rarely have enough people from different industries here. And so that ability to find content that is packaged in a way, that's true publishing, not just conveyor belt publishing to some extent around classical brands and then reinventing those brands as new journals. That is something which all of us are struggling with. So 2016 might be that we, you know, I'm not saying I'm going to go and, and, and uh, have a talk with Lego, but I have done. And I think it's important that we do reach outside the box in terms of who is doing similar things outside of our industry because essentially they're giving content and knowledge and creativity to individuals, to humans who want to learn and be passionate about what they do, preparing them for the big wide world. Digital skills, I bet you all struggle a little bit with digital skills in your business. This is some of the challenges that other businesses are having. And we're, we're also thinking about going sideways to ensure that we're, we're making collaborations that matter to the market, not defined by scholarly or research. Um, some of these corporates are, are fascinating to, to, uh, uh, to look at. Also talking, uh, beginning to talk with, uh, you know, likes of Xerox, for example. They have huge uh, relationships with organizations, and that includes universities. And they're also looking at, believe it or not, some of the opportunities that they have around, they don't just want to sell printers, they want to sell services that, that help people find and share content. Mm, that's, isn't that what we do? So there are, it's, it, it's interesting to look outside the box and look at how other people are, are trading on, if you like, our, our relationships, because they've got different classroom, different ways of working, different ways of engaging the workflows and institutions. Um, the learning tools, this is an example from Versal. Um, I don't, they, they're a learning business, but what's interesting here is they have a suite of what they call gadgets. And these gadgets package information in very usable containers. 
So it's not, a, it's not a journal, it's not an article, although those are also containers. They're using their crafting content, and I know that's expensive, but from a test point of view, once you get traction behind some of these sort of uh, modular ways of delivering content, it may not actually come out to be a classical learning outcome, but you'll find there's huge traction to be able to take things in a mobile sense, in the pocket, get the institution and library orientated toward delivering content in different ways. It's a truly interesting place to be experimenting. And it's not something where I think a classical journal database can necessarily take you. Um, this is an example. This is the only, only mention I'll make. This is part of our, our group of companies. There's a company called Good Practice. What they do, they, they deliver performance and learning. So they're, they're taking extracts and research. They're subject matter experts. They're based up in Edinburgh. And they deliver a toolkit into businesses which takes research content or and re-envisioned so that it's actually useful inside a corporate. They're a very successful company. They're small. Um, and they're UK-led at the moment. And they're ones who uh, are, are giving corporates th those tools that are um, truly transformed uh, research and insights that are practically useful. And that's something that, I've, I, that step is a change that we're, as I said, demonstrably trying to address within Emerald. Um, so well, how have we tried to tackle this? I mean, I'm, I'm not going into details of projects that, that we've got. I don't think that would be part of the mission here. I'm just trying to, if I can leave you with anything, it's this case that we should try and embrace more than research, because research is essentially a form of content that is part of this backpack. I mean, I don't know if you've seen that George Clooney movie where he unpacks his backpack. I've mentioned it to a few conversations today. It, it's important that we don't just carry our journals and books around as if we're Himalayan tortoises, we have to actually unpack that backpack and make sure that we're, we're taking something new to market. They're very valuable you know, pieces of content, but we're not going to, this rising tide, this need for, for students to be able to, um, students, that means everybody, I mean anybody employed is potentially a student, this constant equipping of reskilling. Um, there's, a, there's a data out of the US Labor Office saying that high, high school graduates um, over the next uh, until the, uh, between graduating and being 30 years old will have what's between se seven and 14 jobs. I mean, the amount of change that's going on in the workplace, and that includes institutions, is massive. So it's very important that when you're uh, looking at this, that you open up the, the style and approach of your vision, that the culture and skills within the organization, we are a research business and we're having to tackle those behavioral shifts, having distinct teams seconding people in to tackle some of these interesting aspects. It's very enriching and rewarding for bringing the, the, the business together and making sure that we're having different conversations with the marketplace, because if you don't, other people will be, particularly those startups. Um, transformational energy, and of course that innovation, that ability to, to craft and, 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 and bring um, a suite of, of businesses, both w w whether uh, it's, it's acquiring or licensing or partnering or developing organically internally, those are all important routes to delivering this altered face of what I consider what we do. It's no longer a research business. It's about delivering great impact and outcomes for those individuals once you understand what they want. Now, again, because of the context of business schools, we're able to see that employee, student, corporate learning environment much more closely than you might with a chemistry department where compounds and potentially the, the relationship with, with medicinal chemistry and pharma is, is there. But So there are... In, there are I equivalent models, I think, but it's, it's distinctive to business schools. That's, that's the approach I'm taking at the moment. So without further ado, that's uh, everything I, ha I have for you today, I think. Yes. All right. Thank you.